Now that you're done with pre-rounding, it's time to round on all of your team's patients with your team. Disclaimer, every medical team in every hospital in the country structures its rounding differently. During rounds, you'll be responsible for presenting updates and information on your patient to the team, as well as coming up with an initial assessment and plan for your patient for that day. Remember that we collected these pieces of information during pre-rounds? Well, guess what? You'll be verbally presenting this information now. Another disclaimer, every attending has different expectations from you in terms of how to present, and this expectation will vary depending on how comfortable they are working with you as well. So be prepared to be flexible and adaptable. For example, after working a few weeks with some attendings, saying that the patient is doing well, no changes, is enough. Well, others will still require you to go through the entire full presentation. Now, those are the extremes. Most attendings will probably expect you to give a focused presentation that requires you to use your own judgment in order to determine what is or is not relevant to present during rounds. Unfortunately, when you're just starting, your judgment is non-existent. So it can be a little frustrating in the beginning, but know that this is perfectly normal. The presentation is generally given in the following order, in which patient ID is talked about first followed by the overnight events, followed by how the patient is feeling this morning, aka the subjective, then by vital signs, followed by eyes and O's or ins and outs, then by the physical exam, then by 24 hour recent labs as well as imaging, and lastly by your assessment and plan of the patient. To make this easier for myself, I usually write information down during pre-rounds in this order as well. So if you imagine that this is a piece of paper that you write your notes on, I write the patient ID up here, the overnight events here, the subjective here, vital signs here, ins and out right underneath the vital signs, followed by the physical exam here, and then the labs as well as imaging down over here on the bottom left corner. And my assessment and plan usually goes at the bottom right corner. Once you're done presenting your patient and discussing initial plan, your team will go see the patient together and the physician in charge will ask the patient some questions and luckily do an exam to confirm what you presented. The plan for the day is often adjusted after the team sees the patient now that we've talked about what you need to present, let's talk about some tips for each part of your presentation. For the patient ID, the point of this is to remind your team about the patient as well as the active issues. The more familiar the team is with the patient, the less important this part is. The key pieces of information to include here include age, sex, and any relevant past medical history as well as the main issue being managed. For example, patient is a 67-year-old male with a past medical history of alcohol abuse who is being managed for day two of alcohol withdrawal on the Ativan assessment scale. Next is overnight events. And this is pretty self-explanatory. This is where you fill the team in on any significant changes in management or the patient's condition that occurred overnight for example, patient had hallucinations overnight, but no tremors or seizures, given 10 milligrams of Ativan the last 24 hours, otherwise no acute events. Next up is the subjective section, and this is where you talk about how the patient is feeling today. Is he or she feeling better or worse today than yesterday? Is the treatment working at all? Are there any new symptoms or changes, such as fever, chills, vomiting, chest pain, or abdominal pain, etc.? any concerns or questions that the patient wants to address, and how is the patient coping with anxiety and stress. Next up are vital signs. And what you're primarily looking at here include temperature, heart rate, blood pressure, respiration rate, and lastly, O2 saturation. I recommend presenting a range of vital signs instead of presenting only the most recent vital signs, as this gives us more information. For example, patient's temperature ranged between 36.8 and 37.3. His heart rate ranged between 60 and 110. His blood pressure ranged from 110 to 120 systolic over 60 to 7 diastolic, and he was setting 98 to 100% on room air. Next, we have ins and outs, which is where you talk about how much fluid intake 
as well as outtake your patient has had in the last 24 hours. If the patient is relatively well, this information isn't always relevant, but if your patient has any issues with fluid balance, you better be ready to present the ins and outs for the day. While the etiquette is generally to present 24 hours ins and outs, there will be times in which other time points will be useful. For example, how much urine output has the patient had since his Lasix was given this morning? The physical exam is next, and it is highly attending dependent. Some would like you to run through all the organ systems all the time, but most will ask you for a focused physical exam. Use your judgment to determine what to present and what not to. But for those of you who like to be complete at the beginning, the complete exam with pertinent findings that I use is here for your reference. But note that I only perform and present this for newly admitted patients. I like to stay with a more focused exam for patients that the team has seen before. The basic minimum that I present on all of my patients include general appearance, heart exam, lung exam, abdominal exam, and extremity exam. For my focus exams, I will add to this basic minimum whatever I believe I need to focus on. So for example, I would add in a neuro exam for a stroke patient or a more detailed lung exam for a patient with pneumonia. An example of how I present my physical exam is the following. Patient appears in no apparent distress, plus in a cooperative, alert and oriented times three. Heart is regular rate and rhythm, normal S1 and S2, no murmurs, gallop, or ropes. Lungs are clear to auscultation bilaterally, no shortness of breath, no wheezes, crackles, or rails. Bowel sounds heard on auscultation. Abdomen is soft, non-tender, non-distended, no masses or hepatosplenal megaly. Extremities are without cyanosis, edema, or clubbing. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for this video, but check out our next video in which we'll talk about the 24-hour labs and imaging as well as the assessment and plan. Here are our take-home points. Thank you.